hello and welcome back to the next part in my series of videos where we take a good look at what exactly the DSM-7 Beta has to offer. Today we're going to look at Synology Photos. Let's be honest, of all the things that they've talked about for the last year, at least when they talk about DSM-7, the one application that's got a little bit more of a wider public appeal is Synology Photos. It is the merging of the two applications, PhotoStation, and Synology Moments into a single tool that provides you the benefits of both. PhotoStation was always the more analytical tool of the two. It allowed you to do a lot of customization and I would argue it was the more business-led tool. And at the same time, you had Synology Moments. Synology Moments with AI photo recognition and a lot of other more popularist features that those of you that use online kind of tagging application. I'm not just talking about Google Photos, but of course Facebook and more. A lot of those features and functionality were all rolled into it. But before we go any further with this video, it is worth highlighting that today's video is recording with OBS. And the result is that a lot of things we're doing today are very, very graphical. And although the NAS is gonna do the majority of the work, it has to be said that the PC's own GPU handling will make its mark. So if there are slight blips, then chances are it's nothing to do with Synology and everything to do with my PC. But here is the Synology Photos UI. We've chucked on those same five or six albums we've used in previous videos. Lots of Christmas, lots of birthdays, lots of stuff going on there. We will also be looking at the mobile application on an Android device to see how it looks. But here is what you get. And for those of you that have used Synology Moments, this UI is going to look remarkably familiar. There are a few customization options I have enabled. If you go into the settings options, there's little things that you can enable in the background, such as in the advanced tab, enabling facial recognition on both personal spaces and shared spaces, something I'm going to look at later on. And shared space is kind of the more professional side of this application that allows users that take photo shoots of maybe clients or their own photography they want to share to do so in a far more controlled and presentable fashion where they can control the rules. But it doesn't stop them being able to take advantage of the um, AI powered back end that was always a part of Moments. So let's dive straight in. Uh, lots of animations here on screen. I'm obviously using some GIFs there. And again, when we move over to the mobile platform, it will be interesting to see if they play through. As you can see, lots of photos there. If we choose a picture of a cat, this is Ron, a terrible picture of Ron. We can go up there and straight away, we can find information about where the photo was taken and loads of information about the device that took the picture. An absolute shed load of information, something that Moments just didn't have previously. Now we can share this file nice and easily, just like you could in Moments and Photo Station, and a lot of those options have been merged together. So you can get the link, which can then be shared remotely via the internet if you choose. If you set up an internet quick connect account too, choose whether you want it to only be for the person that gets it, anyone with the link, or anyone in the world can see it if they want. You can even add individual users on your list of um, users on the NAS and add them there. And you can even change what rules they have while accessing the photo. You can even add expiration dates if you want the photo to no longer be accessible after a while and even add a password if you choose. And there you go. I've shared a file there with a user on the system. And again, lots of things we can do. We can zoom in. We can muck around with these pictures quite a lot. There's not a lot of editing functions. That's one thing that has been missing from the Synology platform. You can kind of play around with it in the most casual sense. And again, Ron, I don't know where his head's gone in that picture. But if we carry on looking at a lot of these pictures, as you can see, the GIFs are playing there in the background. And a big game that was talked originally um, between this merger between the two of them was that you would be able to access the folder view that we saw in the likes of Photo Station, but in moments. And that is indeed possible. Flicking this tab here when it'll allow you to switch to a more classical folder breadcrumb style. We can go ahead, select there, and go into those albums individually, select a picture like so, and that picture opens up. And again, you can find out lots of information there in the background nice and easily. And again, the share functions are exactly the same on this side, no change whatsoever. 
if we come out of it there we can then have a look at some of the other more um, popularist features that we find with the AI support let's switch back to the timeline view there um, we can go straight into the albums mode and this is where the recognition comes in so we can go to people for example there's a picture of me there so we can go ahead and give me the name and again I know not a lot of this is familiar to those of you that have utilized moments before but for those of you that hadn't it's good to know if photos are in the shared space and as you can see I am currently uploading photos in the background I'm going to show you a little bit about that as well with the next part of the video but for example here's another picture of me looking like a fool so if we tap R there there's Robbie and when we can merge those together and wallop Robbie is merged there so we can go ahead and find other pictures as well so that is a chap called Morgan we'll merge the picture of Morgan there we'll see if there's another one of Morgan why not that's a terrible picture of him there and we can merge them together nice and quickly all into there and again these um, facial tags that we're activating here will not only continue to work once more photos are uploaded and these people are recognized but they are filtered in to the search and filter functionality that we're going to go through in a little while but as soon as you click on one person boom there's all the picture of uh, pictures of me there they are fully accessible and all present there on screen Morgan as well and again it has found those pictures of people so if we go back we can go to the next tab which is places and whether that's using the geolocational data or with support of the AI we're able to go into quite a lot of depth we can go ahead and look at different areas of where a photo has been taken so for example Clapham Junction there food with friends there straight away we can go in and find out more information about it and again we can go ahead and look at a lot of that background information too and again we can add manual tags or use the recognition um, from earlier where we can choose if we like for all of those photos in that album to be shared however we choose right down here and again all of those same share options nice and easy nice and quick one thing I should also add a lovely little update on that of moments before it is when you want to group things together if you want to select a lot of photos in one go so say we wanted to go to the Christmas album there we've got loads of photos previously you couldn't use control A now if you hold shift you can highlight as many photos as you want and it makes it a great deal easier to share groups of photos or commit them into a new album if you choose lots of functionality nice and easily there in the background so again there's also the recognition of videos as well and again if we go for a video here hopefully there won't be any noise in the background but if we go ahead and check that out we can play the video if we choose in the window and find out real-time information about it but of course videos the way they hold metadata is slightly different now, that was Christmas last year when people were allowed to be in close proximity don't think because of the age of um, isolation and the ongoing pandemic this is quite an old video um, from there we can go back and make our way into the sharing tab if photos are shared with me by other users they'll appear here if I'm sharing with others they're all going to be readily available here in this drop down as you can see I've already shared um, there's that photo we shared earlier on but other albums that I've shared very very quickly are all present here and we can change the layout of those shared files exceptionally quickly um, on the fly if we need them to and there's always alerts there at the top to let us know what's happening in the background of our device in real time next we can look at some of those filters with regards to personal space on these devices if we go into this album here we've already edited some of the photos here so if we go into the filter on the left we can see that already it is identified that we are in the album so we can filter these photos to only have ones that have got those people and as you can see now it's found those pictures with us in them that's me in the background there getting the drinks in now if we remove those filters we can then go ahead and make them a little bit more customizable within the system with loads of filter conditions that we can apply as we see fit Another cool little feature that I would have expected from PhotoStation that I think a lot of people can really get behind is the conditional albums. Now this is an extension of something that already existed. So if you go into that plus tab there and select conditional albums, give it a name. In this case, I'm going to give it the name test. We're going to go via my personal space rather than the shared space that we will touch on. We're going to go for photos only and let's add some filters. So first we're going to say my name. 
Then we're going to say anything that was using my Pixel phone. And then we can choose an area. So say we go for Worthing, an area where my office is located. And now this album is going to be generated by any photo that populates that. And apparently only one photo is matching. So we can go ahead and click that and it's found that photo. This is a photo of me and my niece and we're on the train. And there you go, it has created that conditional album and we can take it a little further. We can go ahead with those conditional albums. You can even set time periods when the picture was taken. And this time, go ahead, click another person, like some of the ones we've created, click OK. And there you go, conditional albums. It's that straightforward. Now, going forward from this, we can go into some of those shared spaces. These are the areas where you have selected photos that can be shared. Now, I've already uploaded photos from my local system. And this is the shared space. This is the area where if I am a professional photographer and I can choose and I appreciate some of these photos aren't really professional, they allow you to be able to share the usage of these photos and you know how they're accessed, can they be read right, are they read only? And this is the area of the device where you'll kind of distribute and choose how you want uh, people to interact with your photos. So case in point, there's an idiot picture of me there. And again, we can change the share settings on an individual photo level or across the whole shared space. And again, that does apply to that whole shared album there as well. A lot of the tailored options are readily available in the background. Again, with the searching parameters, we can search for any of the names, tags, descriptions, all that stuff in the background. And we've got that intelligent background um, uh, album creation that we just talked about. Moving over to the mobile side of things, we can go ahead and open up the Synology Photos application here on Android. And again, this is utilizing the same NAS as we looked at earlier on, and we've got all of that access, both to the personal space and the shared space, as well as all the albums that we've just created, be it for some of the more tailored ones that we created there earlier on, earlier on with the customizable albums, or if we go into the photo recognition for people where we can choose and add names and places to people. So we can give this person a name here. This is a colleague of mine called Chris. We can go ahead, name as Chris. Well, look, Chris is in there. And again, we can go ahead and search for people by name and it will ref cross-reference these people very easily and you can add multiple names and multiple different tags there in the background along with the information linked to the back end of some of those photos. Now, there are some fantastic configuration options that a lot of you are going to be pleased to see. Let's be honest, anyone that's ever dealt with photos on a mobile device um, when accessing a NAS will know that thumbnail generation is a right pain. Thumbnail generation can be handled if you choose by the device. You can do it with your phone, let the NAS do it just for photos, just for video, and it will speed things up long term. With uploading, there is a lot more um, configuration in terms of what you can do, whether you want to upload all photos from the device straight away, whether you want them to be photos as you take them, or the full device um, as you know it is fully populated from day one. And for those of you that are getting a bit nervous about the change in Google Photos coming soon, I think a number of you might want to take advantage of that. We come out of there. Again, lots of configuration options there in the background about how you want things to back up, when you want things to back up as well, be it when you're on charge or on Wi-Fi, all the kind of settings that you would hope and expect from a device like this as well, as well as relying on network or network and internet level uh, information as well. All of it based on um, configuration options built into the app. And again, all of the sharing options all of the configuration, all of the features and functionality that we just saw is all readily available here on the mobile app. And it is running at a fair old pace. If we scroll down, all of this thumbnail generation is being done on my mobile phone. But of course, screen recording software may prove to be a bit of a problem there. But of course, we can still find out plenty of information about photos there. We can scroll down, get all of that analytical information as well in the background. And of course, we can commit shares from the mobile app as well. And again, if you're using a mobile device, you can use a myriad of different tools as well, or just go with a simple share link. And again, all of the configuration and security options all readily available. 
the app itself is very straightforward and again much like google you can zoom in zoom out just by pinching the screen you can flick to a folder view if you want you can even do this really nice compressed point of view here which breaks it down annually as you see there it's a lovely little ui i'm hoping that comes across in the screen recording for you guys and that's about it you can link it of course to your existing um, Synology account or just access it directly via the network and keep offline but that is pretty much it for Synology photos in today's video do stay tuned for the next series in this in this videos um, series and where we will of course talk about DSM 6.2 versus the beta and ultimately what they've got right and some of which I've got to be honest they might not have so it'll be interesting to see if you guys agree or disagree but this has been Synology photos on DSM 7 the beta do let me know what you think in the comments below and click subscribe if you want to learn more about these or click like to let me know that I've done the right thing for you guys go visit the links in the description to learn more and I will see you next time